You're from Israel? Yes. Okay. I am a journalist from the biggest Israeli newspaper called Yedu Ha Ahar Nord. Ahar or not? Which means latest news. I want to interview for its weekly magazine that comes out every Saturday. I am happy to be here. Me and my friend can both feel a lot of love from Satsang family. We are both very grateful for this. As a journalist, I hope to bring some of the beauty of this place to the readers of my newspaper. The first question is, what is your message? Is it something that is relevant for everybody or only a few? So my message is for everybody everybody, not only humans, but even the animals. And what is that message? Know who you are. If I ask you who you are, you will either give me your name or your physique. I am a woman. It is not that. When you sleep, you don't have a name and you don't have any sex. So find out who you are. And your body only is in waking state, maybe some other body when you dream. But when you are sleeping, in a deep sleep, who are you? So find out, and you have to do it now. <laughs> How do I do it when my mind is full with a lot of distractions? Ah, yeah, okay. To get to who am I exactly, to slow all 42 okay. years that I live. Mind means thought. There's no difference between mind and a thought. Tell me your mind when there's no thought of something. And thought means anything of the past, not the present. Can you tell me anything, any thought, which does not belong to the past, which belong to just this presence? You're asking me if I can tell you? Huh? You're asking me if I can tell you right now? Yes, yes. <laughs> any thought that does not belong to the past, Excitement. Hmm? Excitement. Excitement. Excitement also belongs to the past because you would have been excited sometime in the past about some affair. Therefore, this is also past. I am excited. So this experience you have already had. Uh, ask the child of one month, two months, three months, are you excited? He will laugh only. <laughs> <laughs> so be innocent as the child is. He has no thought in the mind. But they said one has, should learn from his past because that he will not, uh, sorry for my English, but that he will not make the same mistakes in the future. So what have we learned from the past so far in the world? What we have learned from the past? We have to learn from this instant, this very instant that nobody has experienced. Everybody say, I did this thing, I was happy, I was in love with such and such person. And nothing can say, I am now in worse state. <coughs> Therefore, I was speaking to this lady, just spent a quarter of a second, just now, means this instant. And that experience you did not have. 
what excitement could be there, you have to find out. And you have to spend this little time, little instant on you during whole span of your life. Now do it and see what happens. You can, I think, very easily without any problem, you can spend quarter of a second. Quarter of the second. Why to lose this time? And then after when you spend this thing, you will remain happy always. That I assure you and I give you guarantee. <laughs> Is enlightenment something that everybody can attain or is it something that only a few people can realistically aspire for? So enlightenment is for everybody. That's what I say. Why? You are not to make any practice because what I say is that you are already enlightened. You are not to do any practice for this. You are already enlightened. And if you get something later on with practice, that means it, this thing you are going to get in future is already not there. What is not there now will never be there any time in future, nor in the past. When you get anything with labor, with the practice, so that result will become, will depend on the labor, on your work, on your practice, on your sadhana, not by your own self. So what you get from somewhere else will not be kept always with you. There are so many enlightened people among us all the time? No, all are enlightened, but they do not know. <laughs> <laughs> they do not know. That is the trouble because they have been told by their parents, by their relatives, by their countrymen that suffering is the nature of a man. You have to suffer. They have been, as a child, they have been listening. And if you go to the church, the <laughs> priest tells you, look at this Christ, you see. He is suffering on the cross. So everybody teaches you suffering. <laughs> Even in the church, they, they, they tell you, suffering is the best. <laughs> yeah. So it is, it is only I who tell, there is no suffering. Body is not you. Let the body suffer. After all, it has to die because it has appeared, it will disappear sometime. But you think that you are a body. And even in the sleep, you have no body. Actually, you don't have a body any time. This is only your imagination. Whatever you see, smell, taste, or hear, or touch, this is not real. When my, my back hurts me, it's not real? There is no back when you sleep. Back is meant for somebody else. <laughs> not belong to you. You have no back and no front. <laughs> must have heard from someone else, this is the back and this is the front. <laughs> so, this is some, some trade is going on. 
some trade, a different people deal in different trades, some, some people trade in the backs and some in the front. In Israel, they practice both ways. No. Only back ways. Why do we need a master if we want enlightenment? So this, I don't say this, you don't need a master to know that you are free. You don't need a master. And yet there are many people here in other places. Yeah, that's what I tell them. You don't need a master because you are already happy, already free. And if you do not understand, then you need a master because <laughs> otherwise if you want all those people here doesn't know that they are free. Huh? All those people here doesn't know that they are free. Yes, yes, yes. They know that's why they that's why they are here. That's why they are here. And if you knew it, in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, why should I spend the air, air passage? <laughs> now we are having, we are spending only just one hour. And after one hour, I will ask you <coughs> if you are free or not. And if you could have been one freedom, you should not travel. All these people are here. There are many people from Israel are here. Yeah. Actually, this Satsang Bhavan is run by Israeli person. <laughs> <laughs> and from the beginning itself, I have been seeing the Israelis are very much interested in philosophy and knowing themselves. And once I was in Morak. Morocco, 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 Casablanca, and somebody invited me uh, in a Japanese ashram who was teaching, uh, teaching martial art. Martial art they were teaching, he was a Japanese. So he invited me, but then he wanted me to put with one director of a school who was from Israel. So I, he had one son, daughter, wife. So I see they, when go to the breakfast, they will not start eating like Americans and Germans immediately. <laughs> they, will, they will prostrate before the food, as we do. As we do in India, touch the food with the head and eat it afterwards and giving something to all the members of the family on the table. And on Saturday they were not using fork and spoon on Saturday. And this director was not using, using eating with the hand. And even going to college on foot because car is made of iron doesn't use, and this also I believe, because Saturday is Saturn. You have influence and something can happen to you. So he will not use even the car. And we also don't touch iron on Saturdays. <laughs> Yesterday. Do you have any uh, explanation to the being of many Israelis here? and in other ashrams also. You know, in Israel there are only five million people, and yet they are here, there are maybe 10% of the people here, yes. and in other major ashrams in India, there are many Israelis. All the ashrams have Israelis. Even Raman Ashram, I saw A.C. Kohan, who wrote a book on uh, Sadhu Arunachala. 
Sadhu Arunagiri, A.C. Cohen, and other man was also, who is now a teacher, <coughs> is also a man from Israeli, Andrew Cohen. Yeah. He, must have, he had gone to Israel also, you see. So not in one ashram, and in uh, ashram of Nisargdat Maharaj, also there were two, three people from Israel. So all these ashram, even in Muktananda Swami's ashram, I've seen. So all ashram, they are here, they want freedom, they want light, they want wisdom. Therefore, they are coming here in India and they are being more benefited than others. Why? Tradition. They have been carrying this tradition from ancient times, like we in India. All others are very, uh, very recent religions, you see. Very recent religion. Christianity, 1995. That's all. <laughs> and all other religions, we also speak and uh, we also speak of thousands of years, at least 25,000 years ago, we speak of this even before that, uh, when you have seen Monjo Dado and Harappa, which I have seen myself, mm. and they were more civilized than even today. I have seen the buildings underground, Harappa in Punjab and Monjo Dado in Sindh. Yeah. Both in Pakistan now. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody can go and see. Now they have excavated and now big town is there and I have seen even the coins. I picked up when it was, there was an accident of two trains in uh, 19, about 19. Eh? <laughs> yes, when up, up Karachi Mail and down Lahore Mail, everybody died and they dug the grave for mass burial. Burial and they stuck something and then they found that then villagers were coming and they were taking away these coins, gold coins in that. In that coin it was written something in Sanskrit. Now they dated it about about 10,000 years. So this is the ancient civilization. And you don't find anything else you see now for this new... And Islam is 1,500 years now. And other religions like this. I was in Pune for no, two one years. Before. Eh? Is there long before now? Uh, is there m any practice for you? You recommend that will enable to keep what we get here, even when we go back to our countries. So when I tell you that you are already free, you don't need any practice. You may be in Lucknow and you may be even in Jerusalem. It doesn't make any difference. Because what has to be changed is the peace of mind. And if I tell you, you are already in peace, you are not to get in Lucknow. What you get in Lucknow, you are going to lose it if you say, I got it here. You only learn, I am already free, I was already free, I will always be free. What about this? If you have a conviction, I am suffering. Why can't you have a conviction that I don't suffer? Soul does not suffer. And my suffering depends on some past. So you don't think that you are going to get anything new. Only you are advised that you were already that. Then what are you going to lose here or there or anywhere? It's so hard to feel this way when you are in the West working with a lot of tension and having children 
and children yeah. sick and uh, paying mortgage and rent a house and buying a car. You know, all the things, it's really hard to feel that you are But then that, that doesn't need to, to spoil the peace of mind. This is the work that you have got to do. If you want to buy a car, if you want to go in office, the legs, the body is your vehicle, they will carry you, you drive a car and work. Even work has got nothing to do with your peace of mind, because you use mind and you use your senses, physical senses, to execute a work. I am, I am holding this paper, isn't it? Yeah. I need hand to hold it. But what gives strength to the hand of holding? Hand is holding. Where the hand, where these two fingers are getting strength? From where the strength comes from? Go back to the source and find out where this source is sending the force to hold a paper. Go back, instead of only connecting your work with the fingers, go back. Now you have to go back and see from where the strength comes from of the work. I am working is all right, everybody says, but where the strength is coming to work? Go back now and see what happens. And that is the source of all work, you see. So if you know this, you are not going to lose it. You have to do it. You have not to think. Simply go back where, see where, which is the source of thought, which is the source of activity. When you are quiet, just now you are quiet for some seconds or even a minute, what was going on during this silence? I, 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 I was trying to catch the moment and I was not really Yeah, that is it. other. What I am asking is, during this silence, what did you see? If you say, I was trying, what is this I that was trying? Have you seen it? Have you known it? No. No. Then why you speak of something which you have not seen? Why you have brought in the word I that you have not seen? I was trying. Was is past, <coughs> not of present. like to change all our grammar, you know, to, to change all our... <coughs> <coughs> yes, you have to change it. You have to change everything for what is real. But we don't change, therefore, what is unreal, not truth, false. <coughs> Imagination that we are holding, this is, this is taught to us by our parents. So let us try for the best now itself and teach the ancients that was not to reject all religions that teach you of the past. You don't need any religion to know yourself. To know what you are, you don't need any priest or any book. Book you can read, but the book you keep on your head it will not give you any peace of mind. You have given respect to the book. Load the books on off all the religions on the back of a donkey. What he will get? So, 
I was in Pune for two years in Osho's ashram. Everybody there was very busy. Uh, busy activities were going on all the 24 hours. Here nobody seemed to be doing anything. <laughs> Nothing going against human nature, yes. yes, yes. Uh, that's, I, I also have gone to Pune and see everybody is very active. Even on this road, even outside of the road, they are very active and the local residents are... <laughs> <laughs> They are complaining that our young daughters also become active like <laughs> Even outside on the road also, they are active. And in the Buddha hall, uh, you must have entered and enjoyed also, no? Happiness, this happiness you must have enjoyed in the Buddha hall. <laughs> so that happiness, uh, you cannot find here because <laughs> that happiness must be maximum, uh, maximum t uh, three minutes. <laughs> for the next three minutes. And uh, you need some rest for five minutes, that's a good <laughs> I can't openly say because I am very shy to speak. <laughs> On this subject I am very shy. I don't speak anything. <laughs> Therefore, I am... <laughs> This activity was going on, and here no, nobody is active. <laughs> but some people came from when I op was was speaking something new, and many people came from from Pune. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted you see there were many people, and the satsang was going on in my house. So which could hold only 60 people, 70 people at a time. So after that I will give break of half an hour, then again I will start. So, and three, three sessions I were taking up to four o'clock, <coughs> from morning eight to four o'clock. And then after this break, when I will go in to have a cup of tea mm -hmm. and the, some girls will already start their activity. <laughs> in half an hour when I saw this activity, and, and if she had known that girl, you see, and she was upset down and uh, yeah, upset down, and I saw with my own eyes, and I didn't like it, and then I started satsang here, and Bharat Mitra was here, he started. So here some people also uh, will, uh, the man will sit here, uh, and then uh, another girl will sit on, on, on his lap. And uh, I said, it's not good. And he said, no, no, uh, we are always sitting like this in Pune. So we have got this habit. So I told Bharatamitra to send them out. So 
So many people we were sent out like that. You can stay quietly, each other, but not uh, uh, overlapping each other. <laughs> You can do it in the night, <laughs> but here, well, one hour we have satsang, can't you avoid one hour? <laughs> and there was, there were some people and they used to go outside on the road and hand in hand and kissing also. This uh, Indians, they said it's, it's not good, therefore they were attacking this ashram. This. This, one. this, yeah, yeah, they were saying that we send the girls outside and they are kissing on the road. Here, even the husband and wife, you must have seen, they don't go hand in hand even, let alone kissing. Because whole night is there, <laughs> you can spend whole night, why to display on the road? <laughs> and there was uh, one a boyfriend and one girlfriend, they came from Paris to visit me in, in, in Haridwar. And then when we went to have some drink, and this boy, there in Paris I have seen, even in the kitchen, even in the kitchen, <laughs> yeah kitchen and then on the dining table also they were kissing. <laughs> but then here, uh, when they were kissing, the drink is being prepared, means buttermilk. They make, it takes some time to make buttermilk. Meanwhile, they start their, uh, he, he lifted the, uh, what is this called? Skirt, uh, meaning? Skirt. Skirt? skirt, yeah, yes, yeah, skirt. <laughs> Lifted the skirt and uh, starting to be active. <laughs> <laughs> and then many people, many people came around in a circle and looking. Uh, then he said, what is this? Uh, these funny people are uh, circling around. I said, they have not seen, they have not seen this before. Therefore, you are not to do it. He said, she's my wife, I can do anything. But, but not on the road, I said. So he learnt a lesson he came to And once in Paris, we were going in the garden, in the same for people, and uh, I, was, I was walking ahead, and my hand was on the shoulder of this boy. My hand I was keeping out because I have arthritis for many years. I need some help. And he said, this is not acceptable in Paris. <laughs> you, you can keep your hand on me. This girl says, you can keep your hand on me, not on my, on my, my husband. Uh, because here people take uh, a different meaning. I, I still do not know why. You still do not huh? know? Huh? You still do not know? Ah, no. to be a privilege that is only available <coughs> to those who can afford to come here and be with you. Most people in the world have to struggle to support themselves and their dependents. How can people like this uh, gain uh, enlightenment? What do, you, uh, what do you have to say to people who are interested in freedom but who will never have opportunity to come to see you, someone like you, okay. Now, 
I, many people say that we want to come to Lucknow, but we don't have funds, don't have funds to travel. So I write to them, you need not come to Lucknow, but only do as I advise you, to keep quiet. How to keep quiet? Then I tell them, sit quietly anytime, don't allow the thought to rise. And if the thought comes, see from where does it rise. And do this and then write to me next. If you don't, and some people also wrote to me that they didn't have money. They have no finances, particularly one girl from Washington. And she wrote to me, I want to see you personally, to have you question there. Because uh, first of all, I have not visited <coughs> India. So uh, many people are coming, but I don't have money. But I want to see you, I must see you. And then when she woke up, she found $10,000 on her table. Now, who has kept this? Maybe to convince herself, maybe some of her friend may have done it, but she doesn't know. And the man who has given $10,000 also has not given her name. So if you so desire, your desire is very strong and the person who lives in your heart knows your intention. The help will come from anywhere. All world is going to obey you if you want just freedom, only freedom, nothing else. Then you see how the miracles are going to happen. <laughs> Yes. One minute, I, it's not always a question of, uh, of money to come over, but sometimes it's a question of, uh, you know, people living somewhere in the middle of nowhere, even they're not aware of the possibility to be freedom or to feel this peaceful feeling. How, how I mean, are they doomed never to know uh, or to feel this peaceful or freedom in life? That's why I ask you before if uh, uh, freedom is equally or, uh, to all the people, because some people read or heard about you or other people, so they have the chance to get close to them. But you know, for example, my parents, they will never get to something close to that if I will not tell them, tell them. If I will tell them, they will laugh about it. So they doomed to live in this uh, suffer with this emptiness all their life. <coughs> now, if your parents could not come, they did not come, but it is your parents who have sent you here. They have if you don't understand, I will tell you, your parents have given you birth, isn't it? What? Your parents have given you birth. Your mother and your father, they are responsible that you are born, isn't it? Yes. So you must be thankful to them because many boys, many girls are born of parents who are not able to visit. So a lucky is a person whose parents have given birth to this kind of person, girl or a boy, who could go to some guru, some ashram, some good place, <coughs> so you must be thankful to them. So if you have learned something, you tell to your parents, surely they will like it. And some people have gone here to see that their parents, mother or the father is very ill ill and he is dying. I have received a phone call that he is dying. If you want to see his face, come now itself. Maybe the doctor says he has only two days to live. So I immediately tell them, you go 
immediately go and see your dying father and then you place your hand on his chest chest that you are not born and you are not going to die and this teaching she is taking back and this teaching nobody gives nobody is ever born and nobody is ever going to die this is the teaching because this body is just like a shirt or a, or a pant you if it is worn you take a new one thrown away like this is the body throw away one body another good body we will get so it is no problem if you die you are going to be reborn as a fresh person again but die with this thought that i am happy everybody cries nobody is goes smiling kabir says have you heard of saint kabir kabir no you will give one book to her and other books also kabir says everyone when he is born he cries child cries no when he is born yeah yeah everyone who is born he cries and parents are happy neighbors are happy relatives are happy and they come to congratulate the person who has given birth to a boy or a girl congratulations others are happy child is crying therefore kabir says while going while going back or when you are dying let the others now cry and you go happy <laughs> Are you going to nominate a successor to take over your teaching role? No, 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 no. Huh? Number seven. Number seven. <laughs> so this I did it. No, many no. people came here from Pune after Osho died uh, because they felt the need for a living master. What would all these people do when you leave your body? Uh, should they move? move on and look for another master what advice do you give them now and while uh, you are still alive <laughs> so if they come here they are not come to to visit my body this i tell them that this is a, just like a shirt if i hang the shirt here who will come here so, <laughs> so They, I tell them definitely, definitely, that don't visit me when I am dead. But you are coming here for something else that will not die. That will not die, and then you can come like Raman Maharishi has left his body, but thousands of people, more people go now. then they were going going when he was alive why because it was his teaching which stays in the vibration of the atmosphere where he treaded that place is sanctified place uh, this foreigners cannot understand we have respect for this so that place is sanctified because of his wisdom and where he spent that that place gets charged not visiting anybody any body doesn't doesn't stand in this understanding if you are quiet just quiet not speaking to anyone and you will see the vibration of that room when you enter you surely will feel something is here I have heard you say that doubt is one of the greatest obstacles to enlightenment. Yes, 
Doubt is the only obstacle in enlightenment. And if you don't have doubt, you are enlightened. Don't have any doubt. Why should you call your dread yourself and have a doubt, I am suffering? Avoid this doubt. And then, first of all, avoid this doubt that I am a body. I am not the body. So this is quite enough for enlightenment. <coughs> Simply say, I am that. I am that. I am not the body, I am not the senses, not even the mind. These three things you can do now and see who you are. That you do every day when you are sleeping. You are not the body, not the mind, but you are happy. Not all my nights are happy, you know. <laughs> hmm? Not all the nights are happy when you dream. Yeah, yes, you are happy. When I dream? Huh? When you dream? I'm night. not speaking of dreaming and waking, there's no difference. Even now you are dreaming. Even now you dream. <coughs> and when you are dreaming, do you say that uh, I am dreaming? That is reality. In dream, if you find a tiger pouncing on you, and would you say to him, you are a dream tiger, I am not afraid of you, you come. <laughs> so dream and waking, there is no difference. This is also a dream, you see. What vanishes on awakening, when you wake up, the dream breaks away, isn't it? So like this, when you are enlightened, this dream also will fade away. Like other dreams in the night. So this is also a dream. So if it is not a dream, it must stay always. The reality doesn't disappear. What disappears is a dream, is not true. So what does not disappear is the truth. So if you have seen that, I am not the body, I am that, <coughs> then this will not disappear. This is reality. Most teachers and teachings stress that desires have to vanish for enlightenment to happen. How can this happen? How does one reach the point where desires no longer even arise in the mind? So I don't teach anyone to uh, for the desires to vanish. I say, let the desires should may be there, desires of no harm. I, wa I have a desire that I am hungry, so I want to eat something. If nothing in the house, you go to restaurant and eat. This is a desire. But in fulfilling... It's not need. It's not needs. Not? Wanting to eat, it's not needs, it's not a desire. Desire no, is maybe to eat more and more and more and more. Yeah, yes, yes, but if you more, then you, after that, you go to hospital, then also you say. <laughs> because doctors are there, they also have to be fed, no, somehow. <laughs> Unless you overeat, the doctors will close their clinics. So you have to eat more, but crook after their profession. And if, if you eat half belly, half belly, half food you eat, and other half you keep for the air to move and digest it, you will never fall ill. The desire, I'm not talking about food or water. So get, tell me any desire, so I will tell you. 
career, a career, a career to do, uh, to be rich, uh, to be with many men, to be yeah, with okay. many women. Okay, you have a desire, you cannot live alone, and you have a desire for a young, healthy, smart man. <laughs> okay. So this is the desire in, in young age, this is the desire. I think the, this is the desire which everybody has had in youth. So if he gets a girl, gets a girl and he let him fulfill the desire and there's no harm. Other masters stop it, but I don't stop it, I say. Because the woman has got nothing to do with your enlightenment. She needs something else you fulfill her desire. When you meet a man, you allow him to fulfill his desire on you. Good compassion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was in uh, Lisboa. Lisboa and I received a telephone call, a telephone call that I want to see you because I saw in papers one Indian is here who is speaking on yoga and other things of enlightenment which I do not understand because we are Christians and Catholics, so I belong to a fisherman family in an island about five, six kilometers from the mainland. So my parents have sent me here to learn uh, this training of nurse, nursery so that the other women of the fisher families I can help. So for that reason, there's a course of two, hundred, two years. And then I phoned to you and you said you come at five o'clock. And then on the beach, one young boy uh, took me to his uh, his apartment, <coughs> apartment, and then he slept with me. Slept with me. I am shy to tell you other things. <laughs> slept with me because we are Catholics. You see, <laughs> we are Catholics, and we have been told by the priest that if someone hasn't got something which you have, uh, give to him. <laughs> so what he wanted, what he wanted for his happiness, that hole I had. <laughs> he didn't have. Therefore, therefore, I am late for this. <laughs> And she was late one hour. I said, then she, she was a very innocent girl. And then she told me the whole story. I said, why you didn't take up your shoes and bat that boy on the beach? No, no, we are compassionate. We are Christians, you see. <laughs> I said, if any, any man approaches a girl in India, she is surely going to do it, you see. He will beat that band, therefore no boy comes near a girl. And she said, then I said, okay, you stay here and take lunch with us. And then he said, I came to see, uh, I've never seen an Indian. But then, now we have come to know, uh, you love me more than my father, you are a good man. So I, have, I, I was afraid of seeing Indians. <laughs> Indians means local American Indians, you see. So nobody knows about the Indians. And then she said, may I come you again? I come to see you again? I said, every time you can come. Then she used to come and start in this meditation. And then she said, I will go to uh, this, back to my island and, and speak to my, about this thing and I will bring them also. He brought her parents also. <laughs> yeah. Now, <coughs> the 
most teachers and teaching stress the desire have no this have given next page and if desires are present one can either repress them or indulge in them is there another option it is uh, possible to be aware of them without doing anything about them so if you fulfill a desire another will rise <coughs> fulfill one desire other will rise and this stream will go on up to the end of life no one can check the desires and to indulge in them repress them or indulge in them so if you repress them then you are not quiet you are suffering and if you indulge in them so after fulfillment of this desire again the desire will rise what to do ah uh, therefore is there any other <coughs> option it is possible to aware of them and without doing anything about them so if the desire arises you are speaking about the desire to indulge or repress if the desire arises simply observe it simply don't do anything don't suppress it simply observe as this paper is in front of me i observe it observation and now you give trial to this you bring any desire in front of you now and simply observe just like a robber comes to your house a robber is coming to your house to rob you of something and you are sleeping he will rob away the things because you are sleeping and now the same thief comes in front of you in your house to take away to rob you and you are observing you are awake then he will not rob you he <coughs> will run away but what about the things which is already robbed television set he has taken <coughs> and your motorcycle he has taken <coughs> <laughs> many other things he had taken <coughs> now No no it will stop now It will stop It will stop it has to go down na when you are coughing there is no desire <laughs> ah <coughs> 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 uh, is there any opinion option to possible to aware of them yes i tell you keep observation observed the desire when it arises then no thought will come like i was giving a example and i left there this person when you are looking when you are aware he you are not robbed but what about the things that he has already robbed quietly at a distance follow him follow the thief that has been robbing and here that thief is the thought doubt thought 
follow this thought and it will go to a, a place where he has kept all your things and then seeing you that you are following this man, this thief will run away. You recover your things back home. And this was happiness that you are being robbed every time, every day, all the time. If you are uh, observing, then no thief can enter you. No trouble can enter the house. Simply keep aware and see the observe a thought where it's <coughs> rising. There are five million people. One, no, one huh? before. Huh? One before. Before, is there any event or experience in your life that is always with you? That is <coughs> always, huh? yeah, this is in your heart. If there is, can you share it with us? Hmm. So the first experience which I, I had is always with me. I was eight year old. So during my Christmas holidays, my mother took me to her sister in Lahore, in Punjab, to stay with them. And she said, I will show you a zoo and a museum and old monuments and a very big garden was there, Shalimar Garden. I will show you. So we had gone there. And she stayed with the sister. And in the evening, milk was being prepared with ice and milk. Almond shake, we call it, in the evening. Was being distributed. Uh, drink some water, sir. <laughs> Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> so they went on passing, and that other family has also three children. So they were passing on the cups of this milk to everybody. When, when they gave to me, I didn't accept it. I didn't accept it because Something happened to me at that time. I closed my eyes and I, I didn't know why it happened. So they thought that I am haunted by a ghost. In those days they only thought because I am sitting and the tears are falling, I don't reply. So that man where we were, he was our host, he said, I will take him to a mosque. Mosque, that's what they used to do before. If some buffalo is giving less milk, they take it to the priest of the Malvi of the mosque. And then he will, he had some fur in hand. He will uh, put at this uh, place where the uh, milk of the buffalo stays. Uh, what do you call this? <laughs> no, no, backside. Yeah, from back to other, he will slowly come. The milk, milk travels from here and then passes uh, through these uh, four uh, teats. Uh, four teats. And they take away like this. They took me and placed before me and then he uh, uh, spoke some Ayat, ye called mantra, you can call it mantra, and then he said, You take take him away, he'll be all right. But then again he came, I was staying same like this again, and three days I was in that happiness. And my mother said, Why you were quiet? And still I was not in full consciousness. You see. So, the first experience is this. First experience, same kind. I can't explain it. You were not afraid of it, of the eh? feeling? You were not afraid of the, this uh, happiness feeling? No, no, I was happy, but I could not explain why I was happy. 
This I could not explain, and still I cannot explain, and many equations have, I have had it, you see. Another equation was about 14 year old winter is very biting winter in Punjab. So I was lying under the quilt, sleeping, wake up in the night and sat down in meditation. I never knew meditation, what is meditation, but I sat down and my mother said, why don't you sleep? And I didn't listen, I kept on like this thing. And my mother said to my father, you go and call a doctor. And doctor was brought. And he tested me, and I'm looking what is going on here. And the doctor said, uh, he's, he's not sick, but uh, to my father he dress, I congratulate you that your son has got this experience. It has got, got nothing to do. Let him stay as it is. Don't disturb him. He will wake up again like that only. So this kind of appearance was happening. Even in Raman Ashram when I was 35 year old, even that you see the same thing happens. This stays. And still, I cannot explain where does this happiness come from. That's what I tell you. If you go back, the source of happiness, and you stay there always, you do not know this is the source of happiness. Therefore, I say you got to do nothing. It comes by itself. So, are things your regrets of them in life? Huh? There are things that you regret of them? Is there a thing that you regret in your life? Huh? If there is things that you are regretting in your life? Blessing? Regretting, <laughs> Papaji. Huh? If there are things that you are reg regretting in your life? Regrets? Regret? Yeah, in your life. Is there are things? <coughs> if you're sorry that it happened. Huh? Hmm? That you are sorry that it happened. Ah, yes. There are? This has happened. Uh, <laughs> this has happened which gave me happiness. And you are asking any regrets? Yes. Uh, Give me some time to think. remember so why should I uh, but I will I will write to you if I remember something <laughs> perhaps uh, you will give me the first regret after reaching back to Israel and writing I have lost the happiness which I had in Lucknow that will give me my first regret <laughs> So, I will be very grateful to you to show me the face of this regret at the age of 85 years. So, I, I will write to you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That before we were talking about Israelis, so Israelis, no? Yeah, I already we talked about it before. Okay, yeah, okay, sir. But I want to ask you: Are you going to nominate successor here? Huh? 
Yeah. Oh, so I, are you going to nominate a successor to take over your teaching role after you? I replied it, no, I am not going to do it. This is a reply I gave you this thing. Something, when I pass away, everybody who is there has to pass away. But what about which I speak about? That is nobody knows. That will stay. That that will bring everybody all over the world as it is happening now. It will st it will continue like this. Because that thing which came is not going anywhere. So. Oh, this millions of people have been answered. Now I thank you very much for answering my questions and allowing me to be here. I am here with my friend Asnat. Asnat. And my name is Asafa. Asafa. And uh, we would both like uh, the new names, can you please give us a new name? Mm. Very good. And uh, this... Uh, Asafa. Uh, Asafa, yeah, okay. <laughs> so to you, I give the name as this. What is this name? Gita. Gita. And what is Gita? That you give one book. So I write to him a holy book. Meaning of Gita is celestial song. When God is happy upon a person, he sings. And then advice, the disadvice was given by Krishna to Arjuna during the great war in the epic of Mahabharata. So Mahabharata was a fought about 5,000 years ago. This battle was fought near Punjab. And this teacher, Arjun, was his student. He doesn't fight because they were his cousins and other relations, some uncles and even his gurus who taught him to fight the war. They are in front of him. He doesn't fight. Because these people were cousins and the property had to be divided. They said, I will, we will not give you even an inch of it. So Krishna tell them, you fight and kill them. They said, this, this man, Arjuna says, how can I kill my cousins? I will go to hell. How can I kill my guru who taught me this a war of the arrow, arrows, so I cannot kill them. Then he gives him this teaching, even if you don't kill, they will, they will die. And they have died many times, and you have also died many times, a reborn, but I know. And you do not know, here the Gita starts, you see. So that knowledge. And other name, Shanti to her means peace. <laughs> Only peace, love, wisdom. So we have already three Shantis. <laughs> One Shanti is from Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> she is here? And she, is a, she has a, had some motorbike accident. And she comes here. She is Argentinian Shanti. And one is American Shanti. We needed one Israeli Shanti also, <laughs> and she's here. Shanti means peace, love, and wisdom. And this Shanti is staying for many years here, but unfortunately, she had an accident, and I also had an accident of the car. This thing. Okay, thank you very much. Nakalda, Nakalda. Hey, Jyoti.
चल चल चल